If you've recently been fired from your job or unexpectedly let go, then we're here to help. There are several steps in any job search, and we want to help you do everything you can to set your search up for success. Looking for a job is never easy, and it can be even more challenging after your confidence has been shaken. That's why it's critical to ensure that you don't miss any of the following steps that we suggest you should consider if you find yourself in this position. Hi, my name's Brent. I own the Vancouver Express Employment Professionals Office, and we believe that there are 10 key steps that you should consider in your job search. Within each of these steps are several paths, choices, and actions that you can take, and they all depend on your personal situation and circumstances. In this video, we're gonna talk about the first step in the process, which we feel is determining your needs, which will be critical to help you navigate the path and your next steps. We'll also discuss what some of the companies and hiring managers consider when they hire someone who's recently re-entered the job market and what you'll need to do to overcome some of the obstacles that you'll face. Number one is ask questions. At this stage, we're gonna assume that it's too late to go backwards. Maybe you've had some corrective action, but didn't think the situation was as severe as it may have been, or maybe things were completely out of your control, but assuming that there's no going back, I suggest you learn as much as you can about why you were let go. Once you've received notice of your termination, a good first question to start with is why was I let go? While it can be painful to have your shortcomings laid out in front of you, ultimately learning about your flaws will help you grow. That way you'll be less likely to repeat the same mistakes and risk getting fired again in future positions. This feedback can also be helpful for the ever common interview question about what your greatest weakness is. If you do find out that the company is letting you go because of a structural change that had nothing to do with your individual performance, then it should hopefully be a weight off your shoulders. And depending on your situation, you might also want to ask questions about whether there are any other positions that might be available internally at the company, whether your employer would be willing to write a recommendation letter for you, provide you with references, when your termination date is, and anything else the company may expect from you before you leave. Number two is leave the right way. If there's no option for you to regain a job within your current company, take steps to leave on good terms. An employer who fired you may be able to offer a positive reference to a future employer. Even if your termination was performance-based, it doesn't mean that you're not a good person, and it may just mean that you just weren't a fit for the position. And leaving on good terms with a reference could greatly help you secure your next position. A reference is especially important if you were fired for no fault of your own, such as a company downsizing. Be sure to thank them for your time at the company and agree on any final steps, tasks, or projects that they'd like you to undertake before leaving. Number three is negotiating the terms of your departure. As a general note, severance is common in layoffs, but far less common when you're fired with cause. If severance is something that's being offered, try to take some time to process your firing, if possible, before coming to an agreement on the terms. Time really does heal, and you'll be calmer if you can wait, so I suggest asking if you could meet in a day or two to have that conversation. Take the time to get informed on severance, employment standards, and what will happen to your benefits in your transition, possible outplacement services, non-disclosures, and liability releases. If you feel like you've been unjustly treated, you can rely on experts and employment lawyers to negotiate on your behalf, but be aware that you'll typically pay 30% of whatever you receive when doing so, which may ultimately mean less money in your pocket. I suggest trying to navigate this on your own and only go this route as a last resort. Number four is check if you qualify for unemployment benefits. It's important for you to know whether you've been fired or laid off. If you were terminated for misconduct, such as failing a drug test, stealing or lying, you'll likely be frozen out of any employment benefits for a time, although laws vary from province to province. However, being fired because of reasons like cutbacks or being a poor fit for a job or lacking specific skills may mean that you're eligible for unemployment benefits. Some employers will give you the option of resigning instead of being terminated, and there are advantages and disadvantages to a resignation in lieu of being fired, but you should review the differences before uh, getting fired or accepting to a layoff if that's what you agree to. Check with the employment standards before finalizing any decision. Number five is take time for reflection and self-care. Take time after losing your job to de-stress and reflect on where you are. You might consider writing down your strengths and weaknesses on the job, what you enjoyed about your job, what you didn't enjoy, and what other roles or industries sound interesting to you. Be attentive to your needs for self-care during this time. While it's important to update your resume and apply for jobs, participate in interviews, it's also productive to take breaks and reward your efforts in small, meaningful ways. This can be simply going for a walk outside, spending time with friends and loved ones, exercising or reading a book. Number six is pace yourself. It can sometimes be tough to hear, but often job seekers go into the market too soon. 
course, this may be financially motivated, but keep in mind there could be a real cost to applying to jobs before you're emotionally ready. If you put yourself in front of high level decision makers before you get the sadness, anger, and bitterness out of your system, you risk leaking emotional information that could damage your reputation. You have a golden moment in your job search where you're operating at peak confidence and energy. You don't want to use up your best contacts at a time where you're not there yet. Allow yourself the time you need to heal before you start reaching out to your network. Number seven is understanding what went wrong. Being fired for performance, especially if you didn't know that there were performance issues, means you probably have some things to work on. The question is, how aware are you of your shortcomings? Do your best to identify them and avoid carrying them over to the positions ahead. Be open and honest with yourself and avoid pointing the finger anywhere other than at yourself. If you refuse to take responsibility, even if only for a small aspect, then you won't learn, grow, and change and are destined to repeat. Number eight is look for the right fit and determine what you want in your next position. Give yourself time and reflect on what you've learned about yourself in light of the firing. For instance, if your dismissal was due to a personality clash with a manager or a mismatched cultural fit, consider what that means about the kind of colleagues you'd like to work with and the environment that you need to thrive in. If you're aggressive and competitive, you may not fit an organization that takes more of a collaborative approach, but there are plenty of places where you'd be considered an asset. You need to understand what types of companies will work for you. Number nine is consider improving your hard and soft skills. While searching for projects, it can be helpful to focus on developing both your soft and technical skills. You might need to take time to develop these skills that you acquired in your current industry or learn new ones that are relevant to the position that you're applying for. To identify relevant skills that you may need to practice, refer to job postings and understand the types of skills that employers are looking for in the candidates that they're seeking. 10 is have faith in yourself and get back on the horse. Getting fired is by no means the end of your career. In fact, it's an opportunity to assess what your career goals are and the elements that you need to shift to achieve those goals. Obviously getting fired isn't the best look for your career, but the fact is, is that people get fired. It doesn't mean you're doomed to a life spent sitting on the couch watching infomercials. You need to take action, start being visible and get in front of hiring managers. Lastly, 11 is be prepared to talk about your termination. Job loss is common and you may be asked about it during interviews. In particular, you may be asked questions like why are you looking for a job or why did you leave your last position? You should be prepared to answer these questions so you can present yourself in the most positive light. You aren't legally required to inform a potential employer if you were fired or terminated from a former job and I don't necessarily suggest you highlight these facts on an application or resume. However, I always feel that it's best to be open and honest if asked these questions directly in an interview. Own your situation, be sure not to misrepresent or sugarcoat it. Employers will see right through this and it'll hurt your chances. Also, if later discovered through references, it'll surely result in you being rejected as trust will be broken. Before any interview, I suggest you write an account of your situation regarding your firing and remove subjective terms. This will help you avoid hints of bitterness or defensiveness that might hurt your chances. You also don't want to emphasize the negative if a hiring manager presses for an explanation of the circumstances surrounding your departure from your last job. You should be able to focus on the positives rather than the negatives, what you've learned, how you've grown, and how it's made you a better employee. Resist the temptation to trash your ex-employer even if you see the firing as unfair. Instead, focus on highlighting your best qualities. In our following videos, we're going to talk about resume tips, creating job alerts, networking, interviewing, and the rest of the steps in the process that we suggest you consider. Thanks again for tuning in. I really hope this helps. If you'd like any more info on Express or any help through your job search, please visit our website, our Facebook, or our LinkedIn pages, which are all linked below. And of course, feel free to share these resources with anyone you think that we might be able to help.